Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. Peter Theron of Madison is a Republican candidate in the 2nd con Congressional District. Peter, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Steve, it's wonderful to be here. Well, the national scene, the national issues change, it seems to me, almost weekly. So I'm going to start out, what are your top two election issues challenging incumbent Mark Pocan? One thing that, that as you said, is, has uh, come to the fore recently is, in fact, law and order. Uh, we've seen our uh, cities across the country uh, burning, uh, and uh, that's not that's not acceptable. Um, another issue that's very very important in in a longer term, once we've we've got reestablished law and order, um, is uh, health care. Uh, it's something that people are concerned about. It, um, the the COVID nineteen certainly has um, uh, made it made it you know, front burner for, pe for, for people. Um, but we need to figure out, we, we need to talk about how we're going to pay for um, and provide health care that Americans expect um, our, our health care um, economy to, uh, to provide everyone. Well, you mentioned uh, law and order first. Let's talk about what national policing reforms can you support? I mean, the president was just here stressing law and order thanking uh, uh, Kenosha law enforcement and the guard, but do we need national policing reform, sir? Well, what I, I think we, we need to, to first of all, look at where, where are the cities that are burning? The cities that are burning are run by Democrat mayors and have been run by Democrat mayors for generations. They're in states that are run by Democrat governors. So I believe that what we really need is not policing reform, but democratic reform. These, these cities um, have been one-party monopolies for, again, generations. Um, as people have said, the most common headline on the Chicago Tribune is Mayor Daley is reelected. Um, and so if, if we have political competition in those cities, uh, then we'll also work on the fact that those cities are very bureaucratic. And as, as you get uh, larger and larger bureauc bureaucracies, you get more and more corruption. Again, it's the Democrats in these cities that have run these police departments. Uh, and so the problem really isn't the police, it's the, the, the civil authorities that have responsibility for the police. Are those Democratic uh, mayors and governors, are they, uh, are they, you just said corrupt, are they corrupt or are they soft on crime, sir? Well, I would say that, again, when you have one party rule, we see it uh, across, the, across the globe, we see it in um, in our country, now, Chicago is is notorious for its corruption, um, and the, the the mayors themselves, I think, they may have come, they may have have been elected with intention to 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 be uh, civic minded, uh, but then when this the 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 uh, crisis of uh, of riots came on the scene, uh, they were weak. Uh, the uh, the, 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 the mayor of, uh, of Baltimore giving people space to destroy, the, the, the mayor in uh, Minneapolis not calling in the National Guard, the mayor in Seattle allowing uh, Antifa to take control of blocks and two people were killed there. Uh, so the, the mayors have shown themselves to be, in fact, soft on crime, and the Democrats have not condemned this violence. The only we're only just now getting um, this is September third, and now we're seeing uh, the the Democrat leadership making statements about uh, the the violence, and people are cynically looking and saying, "Well, them, their poll numbers must be terrible." Violence is not acceptable in our in our cities, uh, and so that's something that should that should have been put forth right away, as opposed to something that was just, um, "Oh, we'll we'll put a finger to the wind and." Uh, when it gets when it when 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 the wind blows, then 
uh, we come out and, and have some uh, statement against violence. When, um, as we saw in Kenosha, uh, we, where the, the, the governor was not willing to, to put in the National Guard and Congressman Brian Stile, to his credit, called the White House and got them connected with uh, the, the, the local officials in Kenosha. And the White House was able to act. President Trump was able to bring in the National Guard because he had local requests. And once the National Guard came in, the violence stopped. And so we see, okay, the, the, the president, the, the federal officials are willing to bring in, you know, the, the, the um, federal resources, but the localities must request. And these, these Democrat mayors and Democrat governors have resisted making those requests. Well, okay, just one more question before we get to healthcare on, on this uh, policing. What was your reaction when you saw the videotape of the shooting of Mr. Jacob Blake and uh, George Floyd? Oh, again, the 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 videotapes of of, of, of of out of context videotapes of of police action, whatever it is, people look at that and say, "Well, wait a minute, that's not a fair fight." Um, you have a number of police who are who are swarming on one person. But that's the way police are trained. Police are not trained to have a fair fight. Police are trained to have a fast fight, just to 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 subdue um, the the suspect as quickly as possible, because that puts the least risk to bystanders, to the police, and to the suspect himself. So, looking at any video of a police arrest, most people would look and say, "Wait, that wasn't fair." Well, that's not the design. Policing is designed to be quick and therefore causing less injury to everyone involved. Um, I think that one thing that is terrible is how quickly people, um, you know, Governor Evers put out a statement uh, castigating the police when it, it, in, in his statement he admitted he didn't have all the facts. That's irresponsible from the, from the governor. I'm gonna wait until the investigation's finished. My initial reaction isn't really important because we have a, we have authorities who are that that's what they do they investigate okay that here was a, a, a police shooting was it a good shooting was it a good shoot that's you know, the, the, the there, there are checks and balances in the law enforcement already and I think we should we should trust that system okay let's move on to health care the US Supreme Court just announced that shortly after the November 3 election it'll hear arguments on whether Obamacare is legal or should be uh, found uh, unconstitutional. If the Supreme Court throws out Obamacare, what do you think should uh, replace it? Well, first thing I, I, would, I would point out is um, Obamacare was, it has, has been repealed in parts um, pretty much from the get-go. Uh, and so this notion that somehow something big is being yanked away uh, really is false. Uh, I think that we do need to realize that our health care system has a, a problems. And one of those problems is from the fact that we are not paying for the health care we're providing. Uh, so one thing I want, essentially Medicare and Medicaid need to be paid for. Uh, before Obamacare, we had a very good system here in Wisconsin for the high risk pools. Uh, and so essentially Obamacare took away a number of things that were working fairly well. And so when that, that those, those final bits are washed away, I think that those pieces that were working well will reemerge and um, we, can, we can build on that foundation. Um, one thing I do want to, to spend on in, in terms of uh, of healthcare is talking about COVID-19 uh, because many of the questions that you sent to me were based there. And frankly, I think that, that uh, by the time the next Congress is seated in January, um, COVID-19 is going to be in our rear view mirror. You think back to the previous, to, to, to January of this year, the Democrats were speaking you know, almost exclusively about impeachment. Impeaching Donald J. Trump was their big accomplishment. And yet the, um, the Democrat National Convention, which just completed, they didn't speak of impeachment at all. So seven months, it was out the window. So here's one thing I'd like folks to look at, and that is, let me do this here. Uh, 
Okay, this is the graph of the weekly deaths uh, from all causes. So as and this goes back from 2010 to uh, the current day. Um, you'll note that we have, first of all, a gentle slope. Uh, and so that, that, that's, an, we have, we're at this point roughly um, 51,000 deaths per week of all no, causes. So this is not just COVID-19, this that's is everything. cancer, that's COVID, that's flu. This is that's cancer, cancer, COVID. Cardiac, everything. Yep, cardiac, sl slipping in your shower, all okay. causes. Okay, so, so what's your point with this so, graph? So, so, for, so, so the first point is, you'll notice we have for uh, a, 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 yearly, a, a yearly peak in valley. That's the flu. You'll notice this year, we have a, a fairly significant spike uh, it's it's greater than anything in the last 10 years. Although if we went back further, the Hong Kong flu was actually an even bigger spike. Okay, so there's our spike for, for COVID. Um, and you'll note that we're actually now back on our track decreasing. So let's look at COVID. So here we have the weekly deaths for COVID. Okay. Um, you'll you'll note that we have the increase and then a, a, a second what looks like a second peak. Uh, it is a second peak. Okay. Uh, that's national, but if you divide it up, the United States is, if you will, a very tall country. We have northern states and southern states. The northern states of which, which Wisconsin is one, they they peaked very early, and they are in total pretty much out of the picture now. The southern states, okay, their peak, they, they peaked much later. And so that peak of the southern states is what gave us what appears to be a national bump. But notice that no state, once it passes its peak and begins to decline, really comes back up again in any significant way. So we expect that the southern states are going to follow the same pattern. COVID-19 is no longer an emergency and going for by the time again the congress is, is seated in january of 2021 2020 will be in our rearview mirror to great rejoicing um and covid 19 will also be there okay peter i appreciate your research i've got a follow-up question on covid and we've got a few other subjects okay. to cover here's my question um you know that uh the house and the senate cannot agree on the next covid 19 package mm -hmm. my question for you is should it include uh, a, a continuation of the 600 weekly federal benefit, 400, 300, or zero? I guess what I would say, first of all, but th that's going to be done before I'm sworn in. Um, but but you're running would, for Congress, I, so, so your position is I understand. Is I understand. What I'm getting at is that by, by January, people might be trying to claim that we should have a fifth package. Right now, what I would say is we have businesses for example, the, the hair salon in San Francisco that have been shut down by the government and many people are unemployed. So for those small businesses, I would be in favor of having their employees receive a $300 bump. Uh, but the, the economy is opening up. We need to be encouraging people to be looking for work. And so in gen so outside of that specific, and, and there's a fair number of folks who are in that, in that category, um, I think that the um, we should have the, the regular unemployment um, is is sufficient. Okay, um, the president wants federal payroll taxes not withheld through the end of the year to give workers more money to deal with their personal financial situations. Do you support that? Because Democrats say that threatens the stability of our social security system. Um, both sides are right in some sense. Um, if you have an emergency now saying, well, you're, you're, you're spending your savings from the, you know, what, what you put aside for retirement, well, I need to put food on the table now. Um, but there are, the Democrats are right that this is money that is supposed to be saved for retirement, and um, it, it, it will need to be replenished. Uh, the, best that, but the best way I believe that that will happen is opening up our economy and um, allowing Americans to once again enjoy uh, the, 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 the frankly booming economy we had in January before we entered the lockdown. Okay, let's talk about uh, immigration. What's your message to the uh, young, young adults, DACA, those that came to the United States as children 
uh, brought there by parents or, or, or caretakers. Um, what's, what's your plan for, for DACA adults? Well, I think that it, it, it's very interesting because the, um, the, the DACA executive order that uh, Barack Obama had, he knew was unconstitutional. It went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court found some way that Donald Trump's re reverting or uh, revoking of that executive order uh, wasn't appropriate. I think that Donald Trump did the right thing because uh, Barack Obama did it with a pen and phone. He did not go through the legislature. He did not pass a law. And so I think that this is something that needs to actually go to Congress, be debated there, and um, actually have legislation. Uh, enough with so, so Donald Trump's saying, wait a minute now, this was an unconstitutional executive order. It should be rescinded. And then um, we will um, work on legislation because, uh, yes, there are many things about our immigration law that people could say are fair or unfair. But I think right now, when we're looking at 10 percent unemployment, saying, yeah, we should we should allow more people to 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 work in the United States. Um, really, you know, if, if America, if the United States government isn't for Americans, who will be? Do we need to build that wall with our border with Mexico, Peter? The the the, the, the wall is working, um, and and yes, it should it should be finished. And according to Trump, it's it's uh, um, it's it's closing in on it every day. Should there be a path to citizenship for those that are in this country ill, not legally? Essentially, this country is a nation of laws. So if you've come into the country illegally, you uh, pretty much have said you're not willing to be an American citizen because we have people coming into the country legally every day and they legally follow the path to citizenship. It's not easy. It's not. It's intentionally not easy. So those who have come here illegally, I think that they should return to their home country and then the, follow, follow the steps that the, the legal immigrants have followed. Today's headline, uh, federal deficit, uh, the, the additional federal deficit, 3.3 trillion with a T. We're looking at potentially increasing it from 23 trillion to 27 trillion. It, because of the immediate COVID-19 threat, is, the, is bringing down the long-term federal debt a back burner issue for now? Um. Well, I think first of all, uh, we can probably get a lot of renewable energy by um, hooking up um, Everett Dirksen's um, grave to a generator because he's spinning in it right now. Um, and uh, the uh, a trillion is a huge number. Um, I think that the, the, the comparison I would make would be World War One and World War Two. For both of those, the United States went into great debt, but then as soon as that emergency was over, that's part of the reason why I went through the COVID-19, because that emergency is over, um, then I think we need to concentrate on bringing that debt down. One thing that um, I want to point out is the government does not have a revenue problem. Now, localities such as Madison, uh, Minneapolis, and so forth, that have seen their, that have burned their tax base they may have a revenue problem, but the federal government does not have a revenue problem. The federal government has a spending problem. And so I believe that what we need to do is um, look at the, 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 the places that, you know, where, where, is, where is the federal government spending money um, and start reining that in. Uh, okay. There's a number of ways that we can do that to, to actually ask, tell the bureaucrats, okay, we're gonna cut you this much. Um, if you cut a little more yourselves, then we're uh, we're not going to cut you as severely. Um, so getting the bureau because any bureaucrat can um, cut ten percent out of his budget. Okay, we've only got a couple minutes left, but I just have two final questions. Number first question: President Trump says social justice activists whose protests have led to removal of statues throughout the country want to erase the nation's history. Do you agree with that statement? Yes. Okay. Why? Because that's what they're doing. Essentially, pulling down a statue says that um, future generations will not be able to look at that statue um, and then ask, well, what's the story behind that statue? Without that physical presence, that story doesn't get told as often. And those stories are our history. Then finally, contrast, uh, what 
contrast your differences with uh, Congressman Mark Pocan, who you are opposing on November 3rd. Quickly, please. Okay. Um, I denounced the violence anywhere, um, at, but when um, there was violence in Kenosha, Mark Pocan was silent. When there was violence in Madison, uh, when a former colleague of his in the state legislature was assaulted on the Capitol Square, he's silent. So uh, that's the, uh, I denounce violence. He's silent on violence. Thank you. Peter Theron of Madison is a Republican candidate in the second congressional district. The election is November 3rd. Peter, thank you for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you, Steve. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.